Howdy, howdy, howdy. <clears throat> Happy New Year's. This is Michael with NorCal Malabra with another battle report, the first battle report of the year. Uh, before I get into that, I wanted to say a, a, a couple things. The When I started doing this, I uh, was tail end of the fire season here in California. You know, it's the second year of, uh, of some pretty bad uh, wildfires. And... Um, and California and Australia have always had a bit of a shared history when it comes to uh, wildfires. Our seasons are, are opposite. I know a lot of the airplanes that are used here in, in California are often used in Australia. Um, but, you know, God, the, the extent of devastation that's uh, occurring down in Australia is just a, an order of magnitude higher than what we see here in California. I know there's differences in population density and so on, but you know, I think I saw a stat where two million acres were burned here this this last year. Uh, the current wildfires raging in Australia is about 13 million, so six or seven times as as large as what has occurred. And it's just stunning. As someone who uh, grew up in California has always experienced these things, have watched over the years as these fires have gotten worse uh, and bigger for various reasons, um, I just just couldn't imagine. I, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to have played the Australian team in the ETC a number of years back, back in the Warhammer 8th edition. I had a great time with with those guys. Uh, there's always been good podcasting content that's come out of Australia. Uh, I've got a good friend of mine who is heading to Australia uh, right now uh, to play in CanCon and AOS. Um, and, you know, I just I just hope, you know, our, our friends down there in in Australia are, are OK and, and, you know, they are able to get these fires under control soon. So, you know, just know I'm thinking about you guys, um, you know, and, and uh, you know, let's get this flipping some cards. So. Uh, today uh, we just played this a couple days ago. Uh, this is actually the second game of the of the year. Uh, we've got uh, someone we're introducing to you know kind of round out a fourth. Uh, he did play some M2E. Um, you know, probably be a little while before I, I film one of those since most of the games right now are, are kind of teaching games and getting his feet wet. Though apparently he did pretty well this last Thursday. Um, uh, he plays Rezzers exclusively, so we'll be seeing a lot of Rezzers uh, between Josh and and Dave. Um, but again, we, we have, I think at this point, as I'm starting to pay them to Guild, we should have all of the factions represented. Um, so hopefully we'll see some some more than just my Arcanist uh, versus uh, Rezzers. So for the first battle report, I busted out Karis. Uh, she's uh, also in my regular rotation along with Tony and Sandy. Uh, played Josh's uh, Molly. He's got the alternative Molly set, you know, the Mariner themed one. Um, he and I have played, uh, I've played against his Molly back in, I want to say September a couple times. Oddly, we were, we were practicing for a small little tournament up in Sacramento playing you know we decided to play round two just to get some practice in and you know as is the nature of these things we end up playing round two he did actually a phenomenal job of taking the lessons learned from our practice game and applying them into the uh into the the tournament game and and i i probably outsmarted myself a little bit on the on picking some schemes and it ended up being extremely extremely tight game that really came down to a flip or two um it, it you know i did eke it out just the, by the narrowest of small um, margins but anyway so uh, i dig, i digress uh, you know, you guys don't care about that um so karis versus uh, molly today so we've got flank plant explosives i really like karis into into plant explosives it's a pretty fast crew uh so that tends to be uh, the one i take i also like uh staying deep into it as well uh hold up their forces search the runes, take prisoner, claim jump, and outflank. I would end up um, I would end up taking search the runes, uh, and some interesting things happen, and I'll point that out, uh, as well as outflank. Uh, as would Josh. Uh, you know, he would also take search the runes and outflank. So Josh's Molly crew uh, is 
uh, obviously Molly and the Wayward Mariner, which is, uh, I believe it's a necrotic machine. Um, Archie, Dead Rider, Forgotten, Forgotten Marshal, Manos, The Risen, um, seems to be a very common tank uh, take. And then Kruligan, so pretty strong, pretty, I think down the middle. The interesting pick for me was Dead Rider. Um, I would have gone a little different route, and we'll talk about that at the end of the game. Uh, my Karis crew is pretty standard as well, or pretty down the middle, nothing nothing too out of the ordinary. So we have Karis, the Eternal Flame, Carlos, a Fire Golem, a Fire Gammon, a uh, Soulstone Miner with Magical Training. Yes, the Arcanist Crutch is back in my list. Uh, a Wind Gammon, and uh, Elijah Bergman. Um, so this last nine points, I just couldn't figure out what the heck I wanted to do. Um, do with it. it, you know, it ended up, you know, he's got Ruthless, so I, you know, I knew Archie would be, I'd be facing Archie, so that'd be, you know, helpful, Blade Rush, um, yeah, you know, a, you know, he can self-heal, so thinking, you know, him and, my thought is, him and the Fire Golem can go in and, and be my beaters and tanks and, and do the, the heavy lifting as far as taking out models while the rest of my crew uh, goes about scheming. So I dipped into my old Quake City Rumble uh, terrain, uh, decided to go a little bit of a um, of a uh, jungle theme here. Uh, my I did order a couple mats uh, with the new lines. They didn't come in time. In fact, they came uh, the day after our game. So. Um, but what you see here is, um, you know, a lot of the, the big stone, you know, you can also see it's a bit uh, well used here. I've got to do some repair work on this if I'm going to start running some tournaments, which I, I, I'm planning on doing. Um, but, the, you know, the pyramid thing is just, you know, climbable uh, terrain, um, a lot of uh, impassable cover. Uh, you've got the my rocks way up in the left-hand corner there. That's uh, uh, cover and severe. The uh, there is a hazardous pool there. Um, I think everything else is pretty much on par. The the big flats, green flats, are concealing, dense, and severe. Um, and I don't know if you can really see the lines in the picture, but you know, uh, with flank, imagine the center line going through, um, and that would impact uh, my my play there. And I'll, I'll point it out when we get to it. Uh, just another angle, uh, that palm tree there, the whole base. We're we're playing the whole base, and that is you know like most of the rest of the the forest that we do, which is severe, dense, and uh, concealing, except for you can't go through the big uh, palm tree there. Uh, you do have to go around it. That does provide cover. So we get into into my deployment. I had to futz around um, with that hazardous terrain. I'm right up on the line. Uh, obviously, also miners hanging out in the back. The wind gammon is off, ready to head for one of the corners. Um, and so we've got Elijah. We've got uh, fire gammon, fire golem. Uh, we've got Carlos, we've got the Eternal Flame, and we've got Karis, and they're all clustered there. Um, I don't know if you're you're familiar with Karis or not, and maybe I'll try to walk through kind of the opening steps to get the machine going. But the idea is to try to get flaming out, you know, on all my models. Um, the various models can use it uh, one of two ways, depending on what model it is. Um, for people like um, Karis and uh, Elijah, you can just uh, uh, spend one of your burning, um, one of your, uh, you know, lower your burning condition by one to get a positive on a flip. So pretty good. We want to stack those up. Uh, the gammon and the golem can use uh, burning. They can lower their burning by up to two, uh, and then lower damage by two. And since it's not armor, it's it's it's. Uh, it's pretty good and avoids a lot of the things that can get around armor or shielded uh, and can be used in a number of different ways. The um, And so you cluster together both Carlos and the fire golem, uh, you know, when they start their turn will pulse out um, some burning. Uh, these are the, 
you know, where I put the explosives. So one on Keras, one on the Soulstone Miner, one on the Wind Gammon, which, you know, nice reflection there. And then two on Carlos. Carlos is, is a scheme runner, uh, extraordinaire. Uh, I should add, and you'll, you'll see this in the pictures, uh, Josh kept track of his um, explosive markers by just, you know, having them next to the models, which was a little bit annoying because, you know, it, has he dropped it? Has they not dropped it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, would have preferred if he just kept them on the cards, but so be it. So he ends up giving one to uh, Manos, one to the Dead Rider, one to the Kruligan, one to Archie, and I can't, don't know if he gave it to the Mariner or to Molly for the last one. Um, we'll probably see a little later in these some of these shots. All right, so this is uh, you know a couple of turns in. Uh, or activations in to my first turn, or the first turn, I should say. Uh, let me walk through kind of the engine here. Now, you'll see a lot of tokens, you know, and I try to flip them over and put a B, uh, write a B, or they have the actual flaming, because uh, I don't have enough flaming uh, markers <laughs> to actually um, actually place down. Uh, my models didn't get any other conditions at all during the game. So if you see a marker there, uh, other, uh, you know, it's absolutely, it's a burning marker, except for the Soulstone Miner, which had a shielded and a focus uh, markers on them. Um, you know, they're, it, all the other markers you'll see are burning. Um, I could keep track of them either through the app or on my card. I just I just find, um, especially when it's a, a condition that you're using as a resource, I like having it where, I, you know, I can visually see it and say, okay, I've got two burning on, Keras, I know, you know, I can start planning how I'm going to use those um, and so on versus if it's just sitting on the card, I'm not seeing, you know, I'm not necessarily seeing that a um, little bit more tactile player, I guess. Um, so first move with, you know, I, I buried this old stone miner, blah, blah, blah. But first move with the actual crew is go with Carlos. He pulses out a burning to the entire crew. Everybody picks up burning one. Uh, he then puts out a uh, flame pyre, which you see there, uh, much, it was much closer, obviously, um, uh, uh, to the crew. And then he goes ahead and just walks, walks to that point right there. It's pretty, pretty fast, uh, model. My next activation is the fire gammon and he walks through that pyre marker. Uh, so first activation is to walk forward into the pyre marker. The second activation is to walk out of the pyro marker, but uh, once per uh, activation, he can, uh, any pyro marker he moves through, he can put it next to him. So he picks up three burning at this point. He picked up one from um, from Carlos and then two from the pyro markers. The, you know, the idea being um, uh, that big boy, the fire golem has an ability called draw flame and I can just see him there, just, he's just within range. And what he'll do on his, is a bonus action, is he'll he'll um, go ahead, do it, jump forward, uh, draw off those three burning onto himself while landing into into the fire. And so, right, boom, he's got five. Um, you know, my major tank has already got five burning on him. And yeah, that's, that's a lot of damage he can start taking. That's before he even starts act, you know, doing anything while he's standing in that fire marker. That's the idea. Uh, didn't quite work out as well as I wanted. So uh, he goes with Manos at this point. Um, you know, he had done some other things. You can see uh, the Krulian had dropped a marker to allow some card draw there. Um, you can see those red. Those are his plant explosives, but he's keeping track of them by physically having them move around with the models. Again, this is why I thought it was annoying. Because I can't tell, did Manos happen to drop that or not? Um, obviously, on his side of the table, I wasn't worried about it. Anyway, so Manos leaps forward and kills the damn Gaiman. Um, uh, pretty much just took it out pretty pretty quickly. He ends up moving back. I think this was halfway through his activation, uh, which is annoying. So now I find my uh, my Fire Golem uh, not able to jump, leap forward and grab a bunch of burning and be in his face. Pretty smart play. I don't think he, Josh has played against Mike Harris yet. He might have watched um, 
Mike and I play one time, but uh, you know whether he he saw it coming or just took advantage to, to take down a model, uh, it, it absolutely worked out for him. Uh, you know, another uh, a little, little later in, in the turn, um, Dead Rider. Uh, I think he failed his ride with me uh, and just didn't have the card at the time. So he moves up. Um, not sure how the pyro marker disappeared. Um, yeah, I don't know if Molly Molly had gone before. He might have gone with Molly, drawn off some cards. Uh, the Forgotten Marshals floating around um, behind the pillar there. Uh, he didn't get the cards he needed to summon anything, um, so he just moved forward and focused, uh, even with the intuition and card draw and et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, this is where I, you know, again, you know, the Dead Rider left the plan explosive marker there. I, had, you know, he, he, this is why I don't like doing it this way. I just realized where the, his fifth mar uh, plan explosive uh, Archie ended up taking too. So I get uh, I get Karis forward here. Uh, you can see this is probably late. Elijah runs up around. Uh, I failed the draw flame anyway, so I was trying to get it on um, the eternal flame that doesn't really use burning. He doesn't take damage from it, but he doesn't use it. Um, so he's a good one to always suck suck that stuff off of. Uh, he had moved up. So what what Karis did is he she ran up. Um, maybe nothing happened to that flame. Uh, pyre marker uh, summoned another pyre marker moved it uh, so it went through Manos and um, and uh, and the dead rider you know shot you know did a bunch of things to make sure that um, that I wasn't taking the the was it caress of Lilith, Lilith or whatever the thing is where if you do two actions uh, same two actions within line of sight of uh, of Molly, you take two damage. I didn't want to, I didn't want, you know, I've got armor one that can help, but um, I was trying to avoid that whenever I could. So I was playing with all of Karis's abilities this game, um, oddly enough. Uh, and I think we'll see a little in the, on, on the next shot. Um, and then the Eternal Flame walked up and used his ability to pulse out. Um, he pushed as well to get uh, the marker where he needed it. Uh, and then pulsed out. So um, again, Manos and and the Dead Rider are having to uh, take flip tests to avoid burning one and damage. They're getting nickel and dimed with that. Um, but I'm feeling pretty good. I've got I got my beef in the middle here, uh, ready to take on all comers. And while I was messing around in the middle there, uh, Archie leapt over, walked, did a bunch of stuff, dropped a scheme marker. Um, touching that one piece of terrain there. So obviously setting up for uh, Search the Ruin, which is pretty predictable. He had a good side of the board to do that. Um, there's enough throw terrain or down. Um, I would be challenged in getting my search off. Again, you know, he, he's uh, Josh is tending to leave his markers behind when he moves his models. Um, so we're always constantly having to, to remind him um, you know, the, the one with the little die there, that's that's Archie's two. Uh, the Kruligan had moved. And, and so Kruligan actually walks up, uh, does an assist action, the rare assist action, to get some of that burning off of various models. I think the Forgotten Marshal had gotten some from a Pulse. You can see a, a Pyre marker there. And then um, Molly, this is just prior to Molly, uh, I think will extinguish that with her ability to... Um, to take a marker and turn it into two cards. Pretty good take, you know, anti-tech against uh, Karis, who wants to get a bunch of markers down. Let's see here, nice uh, shot of the hand. You can see the table next to us got set up, so we had two going um, at the same time. Uh, a little tight, you know, my table's only six feet long, so we could barely, uh, barely put two in there. You know, I gotta find, I wonder if I have a leaf I could dig out. Um, so the, the Mariner comes running up. Uh, obviously, we've got the uh, Wind Gammon also heading into that corner there. So um, 
uh, this is turn two. Started turn two. I win the initiative flip. Uh, I decide to go with Karis first. So you can see I drop a couple pyre markers there. Um, I am positioned such that the uh, Karis is, and, and he actually did me the favor. Um, the Dead Rider is blocking uh, Molly's view of Karis, so I can do whatever I want without having to worry about taking damage. Um, but I shove a, you know, shove that flame marker through a bunch of his models, um, giving out injured and flaming and doing all that stuff. I, you know, take some shots at the Dead Rider. I'm, I'm beating down on the Dead Rider. He's, he's using some of the fate tokens, and you know, it, my philosophy is when I see a Rider on the table, take it take it down really fast before it can start spooling up. And, and um, I think in general, most of the writers' bonus action abilities are pretty strong once you get up to four or five uh, fate tokens they can use. So uh, I wanted to put pressure on him to use fate tokens to uh, avoid damage. Um, but again, putting putting some burning on him, uh, he does a pretty good job. He takes some, some hits and et cetera, et cetera. I think he goes with Molly and uh, gets rid of three of the pyre markers and draws six cards. And so he's, he's got a pretty strong hand going at this point. Uh, so I decide that I want to pin down the necrotic machine. Um, Carlos has don't mind me. So I push and then charge, um, hit the, you know, I do like a single point of damage. He's got armor too, or some, something ridiculous like that. Uh, and then drop a ski marker on those ruins there uh, for search the ruins. The, um, you know, I, oddly enough, and you can't really see it, I, Molly can see Carlos, so I didn't want to attack twice with him. So I'm able to then get draw flame, and all those markers there are burning markers on the golem. So I do draw flame into. Uh, Karis take hers and she had like four or five um, you know obviously I can um, uh, how did he kill the, the eternal flame oh Manos must have jumped forward killed the uh, eternal flame um, and then uh, and then I that's probably would you know, and you can see that Molly has cleared out all my pyre markers there. So I draw off all this flame. I charge the dead rider, um, do some more damage to him. I'm just outside of the two inches of uh, Manos, so I am able to attack with that charge move. Um, don't do a whole lot. He's got, like I said, he's got a pretty good hand at this point, uh, but I do use, you know, have him spend some of the cards. He then rides with me with the dead rider, which is what he's doing right now. He's picking Manos up and, and riding there. Um, yeah, Manos must have taken the uh, the eternal flame down. That you know, he went down early. I was a little disappointed. I wanted to be able to pull, you know, do that pulse. You know, he can he can do some pretty good damage for such uh, for totem. So the dead rider then uh, punches, uh, you know, it, it charges and attacks Karis. Um, all the while getting uh, burning on my trigger, my uh, ignition trigger, I think, the defensive trigger. So every time he hits me, he gets another burning one. You know, it's stacking burning up, you know, over and over again, um, which is bad news for him because I ended up uh, ended up uh, going with Elijah next and doing my immolate uh, action and that is uh, target suffers damage from burning condition equal to the value of his burning condition and then reduce the value of the targets burning condition by five so I did uh, I did five you know he had five burning I did five he had like four wounds left on the rider um, he doesn't even doesn't even get a drop of corpse marker there I just burned burned him to a crisp I even got the uh, the uh, good for a laugh trigger off so got to draw a couple cards and discard one so for a little cycle which I'm a little worried about Karis um, yeah she took a couple uh, but I, you know I think I had one or two wounds on her that I was able to avoid a lot of the damage that was being done by the, the dead rider was a little disappointing not gonna not gonna lie there so it must have been the forgotten marshal that killed the eternal flame um, not quite sure how, uh, 
you know, you can see just barely up in the right hand another. He, I know he did summon a Kruligan, um, and so he must have done that early in the turn uh, with all the card cycle, you know, that he got this turn. Uh, clearly, he, he was going to have the cards to get it off, as well as, uh, and then, then I was able to charge forward and do all this stuff with the big boy there. So uh, Archie ends up leaping over. It uh, doesn't care. If, you know, I think he, he left and then was just barely able to charge. Uh, Karis, Wells on Karis. I'm using up uh, my burning to get positive flips. I'm using soul stones when I get hit. Uh, my damage reduction flips were pretty damn good. I don't think I ever got less than a moderate. Um, Manos comes in, starts wailing on Karis as well. And this is where I think uh, I think things start going bad for, for Josh. This decision right here. Um, you know, he had... Archie out on the corner on the flank, you know, with two explosives leaping, you know, his out flank. He could just own that that area and do a bunch of scoring. Yeah, he's your big beater, but you know, uh, but he, I, you know, Josh felt that if he could take Karras down, uh, he would, you know, go a long way. By the way, Karras picked up the, you know, Dead Riders uh, bomb, so now she's got two. Um, but boy, Karras tanked like a. Uh, like a pro with the armor one and soulstone use and um you know positive flips you know i was able to uh you know still stay you know just get plain here or there uh, i probably should add uh my win gammon uh dropped a uh you know dropped his explosive marker in that corner uh and dropped a scheme marker touching the hill um when the when the photo gets around i'll, I'll show it to you the uh and the um, soul stone miner pops up in the other corner. So at the end of this turn, end of turn two, I score one for plant explosives and I score one for uh, um, outflank. I declare search the ruins and my opponent points out that the piece of terrain, that hill uh, was straddling the line. And by rule, you only can uh, score search the ruins if it's touching a piece of terrain wholly on uh, my opponent's half. And then, so I take a step back and I take a look. And if you, you can even see it in this picture, that line going through, there's all this terrain, but it's all straddling. So to get my search, I'm going to have to really, really get deep into his half. You know, that huge forest there, you know, that straddling line. I can't, can't use that piece. I've got to get it way farther. Uh, you could just see the edge on the bottom there, bottom right of that huge uh, pyramid. And again, you know, taking up a huge, a huge amount of his half of the table, but it's straddle line. I can't use that. Um, and this is where I think sometimes, you know, take a look. Um, you know, I didn't want to, he won the flip for sides. And, um, and if I had won, I would have taken the other side. Not, not because of the terrain was better suited for search the ruins coming over to my side, but just to avoid that piece of um, hazardous in my deployment area. Uh, but it, you know, again, it's something to keep an eye out, um, you know, when you're picking schemes here, I could easily have gone for, um, claim jump, which is one of my favorites here. I would have scored it here with Elijah or whoever I wanted to do. Um, you know, there are other ones I could have taken, um, and not been subject to the whims of, of who chooses which side. So I win initiative again. Um, I use the, uh, up we go or toss that wasn't this isn't toss it's uh it is called uh yeah up we go uh to throw manos into the um into the flame pillar uh i hit my heat wave trigger which allows me to push archie and um archie and uh, uh manos away so now i am no longer engaged i summon up a since I was towed into the uh, into that forest, I could see through it, um, and so I do up another pyre marker. I charge over there and you know to start picking up some more flaming. And as you can see, I burned the uh, Kruligan over there to a crisp. Uh, I will say this, you know, smolder trigger is just phenomenal. I don't think anything happened here. Um, I just took this as a random shot um yeah nothing to say 
So I charge over, take a swing at um, at uh, big boy Archie since I'm ruthless. Uh, pick up some some more flaming, and then uh, you know Hitch is again all that burning there. That's on that's on the golem. Yeah, he's just not attacking the golem. He figures, oh, screw it, I can't do enough damage. Take him down. Uh, but at this point, Manos has like five burning on him as well. And so I do the immolate again. Immolate? Immolate? I don't know how to say that. Uh, and kill Manos um, uh, by taking off, you know, all this burning and doing, I think he ended up stoning and he, I don't know what, it, you know, but I end up uh, killing killing uh, Manos with, with Elijah again. So he's doing some pretty good work for me. So I drop another plant explosives and attack with the Mariner, um, give him some burning when I activate. Uh, but the Mariner, you know, he's got the cell, he, he can heal. He's just not taking much damage. Aha, I just noticed uh, Josh dropped a corpse marker with Manos, which is uh, no-no, uh, since I immolated, burned him to a crisp. He shouldn't have dropped that. doesn't matter. I don't think he used it for anything. Um, you know, Molly's moving over, probably did something. No idea what. Oh, uh, reactivated the uh, the little Krulligan there. Uh, Marshall has walked over. You can't really see it. It's in the background there. He walked over and summoned uh, another Krulligan. Uh, I think he took a shot at Karis as well. Uh, so Karis is, is reeling a bit. I think I'm down to maybe four health. But she, she is just tanked uh, beautifully this game. Kind of a look down, um, you know, you can see he, uh, at the very top there, Archie leapt, um, dropped a plant explosives marker, uh, the reactivating, this must be the end of the turn, um, the uh, uh, Krulligan uh, was able to drop a ski marker for search, uh, and so at the end of the turn three, uh, he scored one for plant explosives and one for search. Uh, I still don't have my search down. Uh, I did, so I, I only scored the plant explosives. So we're sitting at three to two at this point. Uh, but he's hurting. He doesn't have very many <laughs> explosive markers. I think. Um, I think the only ones he has are the two that Archie has. So uh, I win once again. Um, put up another pyre marker charge. Um, I put up a couple pyre markers, actually, it looks like. Um, charge and shoot twice at the Forgotten Marshal. I use a, uh, a burning to offset the concealment. Uh, hit twice, and I will tell you the, the smolder trigger was ace, because uh, he's hard to kill. Um, and that smolder gets around the hard to kill. Uh, I'll, I'll flip up a card in a sec here. So then at this point... Um, Josh concedes the game. We, we talk it through. Um, you know, he just doesn't see any way of stopping me from, you know, getting one search point, from getting my outflank, from getting all four of my plant explosives. Um, I don't think, he thinks I could have gotten a second search. I don't see how I do that. Um, you know, honestly, uh, Karis has got to run around and drop, you know, some explosive markers. Uh, you know, obviously, uh, the what do you call it? Um, Soulstone Miner had dropped his, so I've already got three down at this point. Uh, you know, I just need to get another one down, um, which is easy enough. Um, maybe I could have gotten that last search, but I, you know, I said I couldn't. So he concedes. Um, let's take a look at the Karis card. So, you know, my shooting attack is conflagration. Um, he's got the built-in ram trigger for smolder smolder reads reduce the value of the target's burning condition by one target suffers one damage from burning so this is separate you know unlike say crit strike where you just add plus one to the damage done um in which case that would not get around his hard to kill you know but my damage was you know took him down to his hard to kill and then he had to take a point of damage from burning um and and so in one, one fell swoop, I was able to take down uh, the Forgotten Marshal that, that pretty much, um, you know, he felt that without being able to kill Karis. And that was his only way. You know, at this point, he had to use Archie to get some explosive markers down. Um, you know, he just didn't see any way to win at this point. Uh, just, to, you know, looking at her car, she's got just some great, 
great abilities, you know, uh, with up, up we go, attacking size, being able to throw enemy models. You know, you attacker, you're going to get, you're going to get burning on you. Um, so, you know, I like it all. Like, I like Karis a lot. Again, this is just the end state here. Um, not sure why I threw that in. So after talking it through, um, I would have gotten actually the full four points. Yeah, four points with plant explosives, one for search, and then two for outflank. Uh, I don't know why take prisoner. He didn't have that. So he, he would have gotten two for search and two for plant explosives. He didn't have any way to really get a, an outflank. I guess Molly could have ran over there. Uh, but, um, at the same time, I was, I would have just sent Mr. Big, you know, I would have been, you know, hunting Molly down. Um, maybe he gets a point. doesn't really matter. Uh, seven, four, seven, five. Um, so it ended up being a, a victory. So I wanted to talk a little bit about my opponents could have taken a little bit different approach. He got, he got sucked into, into the middle there. I think that if he had almost even just ignored my models, you know, um, and played to score, he would have done much better. I know, I know you got to kind of go in the middle to help deny any potential claim jump, but, um, he fell in love with, uh, da, 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 what's the lost knowledge, which is remove target marker, draw two cards, you know, great. But spending three master AP to, you know, to do that, you know, I would have just focused on the pyro markers that were uh, underneath my my models uh, or in the way that a model might want to run um, to remove them uh, and then used uh, other AP for other um, other goodness. Uh, I think even more you know, are these guys, you know, they're, they're, they also can take away my scheme markers. So they're, they're anti-scheming with search in the pool. You could have one or two of these guys in the rear, um, or on an out flank, uh, to help deny uh, me getting some search, the ruins down. Um, you know, they're also good for all of their forces. So I would have been summoning what she did, you know, some of these guys and, and really spending that card to get them into places with what's the ability by your side. Um, and I, I don't think I would have taken the dead rider. I would have, I would have spent that on things like night terrors and other schemey things. And just, he could have just flooded my side of the board, especially with night terrors, who I think are pretty fast on their own. Um, and just had them scheme on the other side. Um, and, and, Again, potentially hold up their forces and just ignore, uh, ignore. I think he could have done a much better job doing that than, than getting sucked into the middle and, and beating on, um, a couple models that, you know, I, I don't think Karis ever tanks that well. I just, like I said, some fortunate flips and, um, some fortunate soul stone usage, uh, really helped out. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm pretty surprised she, she held up the way she does. She, um, but she's fast enough that once I wanted to get her out of there, I got her out of there, and I don't think there was a lot he could do. So that's it. Uh, hopefully, we'll get another one out in another week or two. Uh, hopefully, I can get a guild crew at least partially painted or wholly painted. Um, we'll see some guild action going. Uh, talk to you later. Uh, flip them well. I still haven't come up with the closing tagline. Someone help me out with that, please.